contact, new contact, new contact lock at 207 hours January 15, 2039. Incoming message. Incoming message. You think I'm crazy, don't you? Yeah, I saw them. I saw them with my own eyes. You just can't understand what I have to tell you. I made contact with them. They communicated with me. They took me into their ship and into another world. They told me everything. They were beautiful, terrible, made of light and silk and muscle, angels, gods. They looked at me like I was some sort of insect under a glass, like I was nothing more than some fleshy bug. Their minds went into me and they saw her through me and they took pity on me, on us. They felt the world's pain through me and they gave me the answer, the answer to end the suffering, the torment. They showed me what was beyond the darkness, what was beyond foolish concepts like good and evil. I know the truth. What I know can change everything forever. You're afraid I'm right. No, you know I'm right. What I know will alter the shape of all things to come forever. <laughs> Do you recognize that man? Looks like Colonel Block, sir, but he was reported to have died six years ago in space. Officially, yes. His ship was hit by a micrometeor and he was killed. And unofficially? Just like everyone else, we thought that his ship was lost during the Mars flyby. However, that was not the case. So what did happen? He reappeared a week ago, just outside the orbit of Luna. Colonel Block was babbling, obviously insane. That didn't change the fact that he'd been lost in space for over five years with absolutely no way of surviving for that length of time. From Vandenberg, we checked the atomic clocks on his ship and they were all five years off. This message was on automatic playback, endlessly repeating itself. Block himself flatlined of a brain hemorrhage. However, he had only been dead a few days when he finally retrieved his ship. He met something out there, Lieutenant, quite possibly an extraterrestrial intelligence. An alien. That's right, an extraterrestrial, an ET, an alien. Something not from around here, Lieutenant. But that sounds crazy. That sounds something like out of a bad science fiction story, sir. True, but do you remember what happened back in 2011? I remember quite clearly. That was something right out of science fiction if there ever there was, correct, Lieutenant? The Awakening. Yes, sir, I know my tapes. Ah, yes, of course. The awakening happened before you were born. To those of us who were there, it was the most nightmarish moment in the entire history of the human race. One out of every ten children was born different. Now we call them the changed. Elves and goblins, and orcs and ogres. Back then, people were murdering their own babies by the hundreds of thousands. A full-scale nuclear war could not have equaled the chaos of those days. All of us thought the world was coming to an end. God fearing man like myself, I swear I thought it was the apocalypse, but it wasn't. It was just another phase in history. The magic returned to the world, that's all. But for a time, all of us, the whole of humanity, teetered on the edge of a horrid abyss. We came very, very close to falling in. So you think that if Block's alleged encounter with the aliens were to be made public, it caused more of the same, sir? Correct, Lieutenant. When the ship arrived in Earth orbit, just before we could retrieve it, it jettisoned the ship's logs. We believe the log contains Block's records of his encounter with the extraterrestrials. The ship's log soft landed in Brazil, right in the middle of the day of war zone. We have reason to believe that coalition forces have retrieved the book and are currently holding it at one of their fire bases while they crack the code before sending it on. Could what he said be true? Could he really have been given some extraterrestrial technology? Highly unlikely. However, the possibility cannot be discounted entirely. The Coalition will not yet have had time to break the encryption, but time is the essential factor in this assignment, Lieutenant. The disk itself has a small transmitter device inside, giving off a weak signal detectable within 10 miles. We must get that log before the Coalition realizes what they have. If what Block has said is true, the power which the Coalition will have gained will be staggering. We could lose the war. Must get that log book back with him.
soldiers? The actual term is penal troopers. Why dog soldiers? Because those are your orders. But if you must know, they are company assets bought and paid for. And they know the area you're going into very well. It's ground they've covered before. On the chance that there is something there, the company wants to retrieve the ship's log for itself. It could be a great boon to the company and put us far ahead of the competition. This team is our best team in the area. Our best? You're sending me in with a criminal team. But <laughs> Daltozers are worthless, only good for cannon fodder, utterly expendable, and totally untrained. <laughs> how can you. How can this mission be successful if you're sending me in with trash like this? I agree, Lieutenant. Most soldiers are worthless and are dead within a week. However, this team is different. They are survivors, each and every one. Before being placed in the penal battalion, each was an extremely well-trained fighter. All of them have been in heavy combat for at least two years. Together, they are the equivalent of any regular Special Forces team. Since they have been together in their present form under the command of Sergeant Booth, they have gone on 33 successful deep reconnaissance patrols. They have retrieved over 1,000 pages of intelligence for us and produced a confirmed body count of 411 coalition soldiers. In those 33 patrols, they have lost only one member of their original team. Not bad for a bunch of criminals. Even a mage team would be doing quite well with a kill ratio like that. Sergeant Booth? Is this the same Sergeant Booth that struck General Fincher? It is. Interesting. She used to be a good soldier once. Private Thomas Kane, Anglo-American human, came from the Dallas-Fort Worth sprawl, joined the corporate militia in 2035. Kane was the ringleader of a highly lucrative black market operation, convicted of selling U.S. government property to enemy agents, both foreign and domestic, sentenced to death. His sentence was commuted to life in the penal battalions. Extremely intelligent, a self-educated techie of extreme skill, he has been very valuable in keeping the team's equipment repaired. Private Conchita Alvarez, a.k.a. Cheetah, Spanish-American human, came from the Barrios of Night City, West Coast Sprawl, raised on the streets and was a prominent member of the Blood Crips. A former heroin addict, she killed a corporate officer in 2036 and was sentenced by the U.S. government judicial system to death. Her addiction to heroin made her body worthless to the organ banks, so she was sold by the state to the corporate militia, where she was put into the penal battalions. Alvarez is a team scout and speaks fluent Spanish. Private Fortran, real name unknown, metahuman orc subspecies. Grew up in the East Coast sprawl, parents unknown, joined the U.S. government Marine Corps in 2036. Performed exceptionally well in several black book operations in Asia, wounded seven times. Seriously wounded in Tibet, and during his rehabilitation, he was enhanced with typical U.S. government issue combat cyberware, CyberEyes, Voice Box, Smart Gun Link. He worked with Lieutenant Booth and the U.S. government special forces team known as the Chrome Beret, only two survivors of that unit. Private Fortran has severe brain damage due to a shrapnel wound sustained in their last mission. Killed a medic during his recovery and was transferred into the penal corps along with Booth. He remembers Booth and takes orders only from her. Psychological profile indicates that he is mentally unstable in the extreme. One moment he is very calm, the next he is exceedingly violent. He is the team's heavy weapons expert, cross-trained in small arms and demolition. I 
I thought they outlawed this stuff or something. Only two things better in the world, and that's good drugs and good sex. It's been so long since I've even seen chocolate. Oh, as long as you've had input in your wetware, huh? Yeah, well, not like I've had a good choice these last few years. Hey, you lost in, Sarge? Yeah, what's wrong? We're going on another op, but this time we're going to have a guest with us. Who? Some rep by the tag of Hector White. Fresh out of officer school. He'll be running the show, not me. Fucking great. Now, she on his first mission. SLP will mean that we get our college prime. That's right. Great. What's the op? I don't know. I asked to be filled in, but High Command felt it was unnecessary for me to know. You don't think it's a suicide room, do you? It probably is. Like I said, I don't know. All I know is we're going into some nasty territory with someone we've never met. And from the feel of it, it's going to be a bad one. When do we go? In an hour. So well, I just hope this guy isn't an asshole. Good day, dog soldiers. My name is Lieutenant White. I'll be leading your team on this next mission. And as with standard operating procedure, when an officer is in the field with penal troops, your collars will be armed and primed. Your collars will go off if one of three things should happen. One, you disobey a direct order for any reason whatsoever. Or in general, you just piss me off. Your heads will blow off. Two, they will blow off automatically. Should you get outside a 2,000 meter range of myself. And three, your colors are wired to my bio monitors. Should my heart stop for any reason whatsoever, well, let's just say I won't be doing time in the afterworld all by myself. Now, with all that out of the way, let's talk about the mission itself. You all know the territory we're getting into. Let's talk about the mission objective is to retrieve a logbook. Not your normal logbook. This one contains extreme sensitive information. High Command is very hot on getting it back. So hot, in fact, that Colonel Stanton has given me permission to pardon you of your sentences should this mission be a success. The colors will be taken off, and you will be allowed to come back to the real world. In top penal troops only survive one in every five missions. I suggest you take me up on this offer. Help me complete this mission, and everyone comes out when. If not, you don't come out at all. Carry on. You know the routine. Point all the rest.
Let's hope we don't get flatlined searching for the damn thing. We're going to have a lot of hot territory to cover, too. Wife only got a vague idea of where it's at, too. He doesn't even know for sure where it was. Knowing our luck, log with transmitter batteries of the dead. We went off such a hard on trying to make this app work. It seems like it's zero is flat. Mm. I think it's true. Do you think he means what he says? I'm not letting this go? Yeah. No way. Even if he's straight, I ain't trying to get my hopes up. Besides, it's been so long since I've been in the city. I doubt I'd make it two weeks before I get scragged by some scab or doper. That ain't my jungle anymore, this is. Yeah, I'll probably go back to being a third man. But all my connections by now will be rusty as hell, and I'll probably be selling black market condoms before I get any better, but it's gotta be better than this shit. Yeah, he's a bit straight. Even so, you got a fan club back there that's mad as hell at you. <laughs> be lucky if you don't get beat right off the bus. I wouldn't be lucky to live that long. Hey, you're starting to sound like me. I'm so hungry. I got some extra ration packs here. Uh, if you want to fuck for them. Oh, well, okay. But what if we get attacked? We are supposed to be on watch. I'm a Fortran over there. Those side rides of his, he can zero in on anybody coming in. If he can't, how the hell are we? Yeah, you got that straight. Well, <sighs> come on. Let's do it. With my luck. <sighs> He'd probably be the last play of my life. That wouldn't be so bad, would it? I'll try to make it a memorable experience. You're right. Just get off. And get out. What's all you've been out here? I know you've read my file. That is correct, but I was trying to make conversation, you know? Trying to get to know you a little better? You don't want to know me. You know, that's what I read about you, Booth. You've got a bad attitude. Yeah, the High Command doesn't like me very much, but the feeling's mutual. You may not like High Command too much, but you just remember something. I'm High Command as well. And I'm in charge of this mission, boo. So, uh... I go, just... Do what I say and things will go, you know, besides. These bean pickers shouldn't be too tough. Your team just look at the scene. Real easy to die out here, Lieutenant. The four of us have gotten to know each other. We're part of an efficient killing machine. Don't let the propaganda about the Coalition fool you. Those punks are killers. All it takes is for one of us to screw up to get us all killed. We're a team and you're the outsider. You might be in charge, but we know what's going on out here and how to handle it. I'll do what you say as long as it makes sense. But remember, Lieutenant, we're the seasoned vets. You'll work fresh meat. Are you questioning my ability to lead this team, Sergeant? What do you think? This is your first field op. You don't know shit about what to do under fire. You're the weakest link in our chain. Maybe, but I'll still take your damn head off even without the collar. Because on my recommendation that you and your team get their pardons, you will treat with respect. I could even get you your old rank. Don't do me any favors. I'm fine, you may not care about getting out of the dog soldiers, but do you remember your three little friends over there? You've already lost one member of your team. It's not long before you all go. And if the world were to end tomorrow, you'd still be criminals, and you'd still have to surround your sentence. I'm your only way out of here. The command has never given a shit about regular troops, much less dog soldiers. We're just on this mission because we know this turf better than anyone else. They didn't want to risk their expensive special forces for this little jaunt into paradise. We're cheap and expendable. You're the only one that might be worth anything to them. If we're lucky, we'll get out of this alive. But even then, I'm not expecting my pardon, and I don't want or need my commission back. Expect the worst, they'll never be this man. Alright, fine, Booth. You may not believe me, but they believe me over there, because I hold their lives in my hands. And they'll be good little soldiers because of that. And if they're good little soldiers, they'll be free. If not, they'll be dead. You too. I just want to get through this alive, Lieutenant, and so do they. They hope this will be the op that sets them free. You'll say whatever you can to get them to follow you. Your promise of freedom is nothing more than the carrot and the D-box is the stick. It's not a life, Booth. I'm telling the truth. 
when this mission's over, they'll get their pardons. And you will owe me an apology. And you will regret what you said here. I bet I will. General Fincher. You tell me you've read my file. It didn't say. Enlighten me. Why would someone with such a promising career throw it all away? I've been in the bush on enemy turf with alert team for five weeks during the rainy season. Her mission had been to pinpoint enemy fire bases in a particular area. Anyway, out of the five of us, only three of us made it back. The Zippo and Hangman bought it on a pressure mine. Weaver got shot in the eye by a sniper. Fortran was with me. That was before he went bored. We were the only two still up and walking around. After getting back to our extraction site, we called for called for the base screaming for an immediate evac. Enemy troops were right on our ass. They delayed, told us to hold our position. The choppers were being held because Fincher was touring the camp. For an hour, me and Fortran were holding the damn bean peckers back. They just kept coming and coming. But then, using their guns and their ammo. All my ordnance had already been burned off. Fortran went down, a piece of shrapnel in his skull. I had to hold off the wave by myself, last one, barely. But then the shoppers came in. Picked me and Fortran and Weaver up. Of course, Weaver was already dead. Fortran was still alive. I got back to the camp and Fincher shows up with about a dozen corporate wannabes. He takes one look at me, starts going off telling me that I'm filthy and an embarrassment to the military establishment. Goes on and on about how I have no respect for the uniform and that I'm the perfect example of why the corporate the modern military has a bad name. Dirty slow and stupid. I was getting bored, so I hit him. You tried to kill him. Details. Anyway, the security knocked the shit out of me, threw me in the brig with no food and water for three days. After a week, I was court martialed and sent over to the dog soldiers. I stayed in the zone. That's where I met Kane, Alvarez, and Lucky. Later, they sent me Fortran because he wouldn't work with anybody. So me and those four soldier slaves got to keep on fighting the war for the greater glory of the company. So what happened to that fourth memory team? Lucky? Lucky? Lucky got hit. Phosphorus grenade. Got all over him. Man, did he scream. Gods, he had good lungs. You ever seen what happens when you get hit with a white phosphorus grenade, Lieutenant? No. His skin smoked and bubbled. His eyes melted into a socket. So, I shot him. You shot him? Hey, I'd done the same for you. Well, anyway, Lucky would have been died anyway, or worse. I just finalized the, the only possible outcome for him. He was suffering terribly, so I ended it. Yeah, he might have been saved. No way. He would have been a nameless, faceless bunch of scar tissue. At best, the corporates would have kept him alive long enough to harvest his organs. After all, he was just a dog soldier.
How's it going, Private? Yeah, I don't like him either. He's an asshole. He's a power hungry son of a bitch. Thinks he's one of the gods. He wouldn't be on this mission with us if he didn't have to. Corporates hate us. I'm sure it bites his ass, but yeah, he has to have our help. I guess we all knew this would happen sooner or later. The mission we wouldn't come back from. I think this one's it. Hey, Sarge. Alvin's just spotted a couple of people up ahead. Could be farmers, unarmed, just milling around, not doing much of anything. Okay, we'll wait till they move on. We'll watch them a bit. Someone we'll go ahead. Roger that. Hold on a second, Private. Unless I'm incorrect, Sergeant, I'm in charge here. Now listen, those two are to be captured and interrogated. They don't know shit! Alvarez would have signaled that they were troopers. We know where we're going. We don't need to go anywhere near them. Wrong. I say we need information. Okay, what you think, boo? They will be captured and interrogated. This is a big mistake. Yeah, well, we'll see, won't we? nothing else either, just some farmers in the wrong place at the wrong time. The longer we hold them here, the quicker the odds are that somebody's going to come looking for them. Yeah, I'll bet. How many of them have they shot down? How many of them have they killed? Now, translate for them. Did the Coalition soldiers come by asking about anything you found? And how many are in the fire base up ahead? Mira, él quiere matarme. Dígame algo. Nabasa? Nabasa? It's a Victor. Nabasa? Oh, bullshit, he knows. I don't know anything, White. Papa did you matter. What's she saying? Base on Makula Pinche and Madikun. Alvarez, what's that slick saying? She's scared, sir. I really don't think they know anything about the logbook or the base. Do they have automated defenses? Do they have cyber soldiers? Ask them. Daylight's wasting, Lieutenant. Lotera, Lotera, favorite team for the Mitaranos are uh, here. Alright, fine, I'll just shoot this bitch in the face. What? You heard me flatline this bitch! Wait, you bastard! Look, you back up! I swear to God, do it! Look, I'll kill you and I'll blow their fucking heads off, alright? Hey, man, hey, you asshole! Do it, Alvarez, do it in the face! Greenskin kibble here, I want the old man for questioning. Sorry. Good evening, my dear. I trust we've rested well this afternoon. Fuck you. <laughs> Do better. Your last escapade cost me twelve of my men. Two officers were good friends of mine. They died painlessly. You see, you are a spy and a terrorist. As such, an enemy of the state. As a patriot, I'm obliged to uh, exact my vengeance upon you. <laughs> Probably enjoy that. But I do need to get a tiny bit of information from you. There is a logbook in my possession. I need the access code to that logbook, and I know you know the access code. I give you this opportunity to really wish it to me, and I promise you a painless death. Fuck you, I'm gonna die anyway. I like your spats. <sighs> <sighs> Once again, the excess code. Fuck you! Oh. 
Once again, the access code. Der amerikanische Schweinhund tot. Der Schlut? Jawohl, Herr Hartmann. Klar? Ja. Herr Hummer. Was haben Sie da gemacht? Herr Hummer. Do you, boo? Matter of fact, you hate my guts, don't you? Look at 
civilians you killed yesterday didn't even bother you, did it? No, not at all. Besides, I didn't shoot him, your little green friend Fortran did. You did it because you were threatening Alvarez, and I'm sure if he could feel bad about it, he would. Would he? Remorse is a useless emotion. Besides, I don't think it bothered him at all. Forks make very efficient killers. <laughs> Besides, your friend was a good one before he became a killer zombie. By the way, did those uh, people you killed last night at the camp bother you? No, they were the enemy. They would have killed me if they had a chance. That old man and woman, they had nothing to do with this. They were innocent. No one's innocent. You're the soul of a dog, Lieutenant. People like you get others killed and couldn't care less. All you want is to look good for the corporate brass and get your next promotion. You could walk on a thousand bodies and never look back. People like you and General Fitcher give the military the filthy reputation that it's gotten over the years. You're a disgrace to the military. You make things like honor, loyalty, and duty dirty words. If I could make you pay for those people's lives, I would. Don't make me laugh. You're a dreamer just like everyone else. I look at the world as it is and make nothing more of it. Man is king of the beasts, the highest link in the food chain. Fools like you believe in trust, honor, that cripples you. Everyone is an island, apart, and alone. We live, we die, that's it. There is no God to make us atone for our sins. I see something I want, I take it, alright? What's good for me is good. You belong in some dark age book wearing armor and fighting dragons. I prefer to live in the real world. I live in a pretty dark world, Lieutenant. I can almost feel sorry for a bastard like you. I may be a dreamer, but I still have my dreams. Your dreams died a long time ago. Say what you want, Booth, but in the end, I'm still the one whose finger's on the button. The good guys lose and the bad guys win. And I'm a winner. Chum. Hey, where's the Sarge? He's dead. Look, man, strip that cat in the cross, bro. We gotta move. They're right on my ass. What? That was Sarge. Look, I'm positive. He's dead. Look, he's dead. He's dead, all right? We will have two of you if we don't go. No, oh, I'll cover your retreat. Look, this is crazy. Somebody has to slow them down. Fortran. Go, now. Hey, sit. Put the collar. Go. Turn it. I'm going to tell him blow. Go, move it. Happy hunting, Chumba.
Slayer, over. Mad Dog, the Wolf Slayer, over. Can you read me, over? Read you, Mad Dog. What is your situation, over? I lost two members of my team. I am slightly wounded and have recovered the logbook. Request immediate feedback in Sector B, over. Your current position is too hot to send the choppers in, Mad Dog. Return to your designated extraction site as soon as possible, over. But sir, we have completed mission objective, over. Repeat, Mad Dog. Reach your designated extraction site for pickup. Wolf Slayer, over and out. Damn it! It's like here we are on an option to change the entire course of the war. It's like they don't even care. You surprised, man? You sure as hell. Look, in this war, you gotta rely on yourself. Those people back there in their air conditioned offices don't care what happens to us. They're doing nothing to them. You're gonna stop and be your last. Look, I know you two dogs don't need to get the short stick, but I'm a corporate officer. I'm worth something, too. You should realize that. It's like they don't even want Disposable heroes. Hey, LT. What happened to Blue? Look, he's shot, he's dead, that's it, alright, in the story. But you could push it in. How much further we got? Well, at the rate we're going, if we don't hit any more patrols, we'll have about 12 or 14 hours of cooking to go. But it's getting dark soon, and we lost our night side with four trans, so it might be longer than that. Great. So, sir, how are we done so far? I mean, is this mission a win or what? Look, when we get back to the base, then. So I get pardoned like you said, okay? Right? I'll have pardons waiting for you two when you get back to the base. I went for Booth and Fortran as well. A little late, but better late than never, huh? Great, right. You okay, Cheetah? Yeah, it will be as soon as I get out of here. I mean, it's just tough leaving people behind, you know? Look, we should be moving instead of flapping the lips. just going, right? Look, LT, why don't you shut the hell up? But we just lost two friends back there. Friends we've known and trusted for years. You, you're nothing, you're nobody. You're just some Wilson who thinks he's hot shit playing recon. We ain't even covered this up, they'd still be alive. So just shut up. I remember you're talking to your slitch. I'm a corporate officer, born bred war trainer, certified for my company. You're nothing. You're less than nothing. You're a loser, all right? You're dog soldiers. That booth and war trainer was losers who time was up. Or you'll die right now. You. Back off. Look, sir. I'm really sorry for anything we've done to piss you off, but I mean, we've been trying to help Jello to retreat for the past couple of days, and I mean, shit, we're all back to flatliners. And... Well, look, I'm, I'm really sorry for anything we might have said to piss you off. He may be, but I'm not. Just shut the fuck up, okay? We're not gonna make it, Kane. You know that. We can't. I never thought about getting out of here alive. Look, we'll make it, gosh, not good, anything to screw this thing up, I mean, just in a few days, you know, we'll be home free, we can go back and doing whatever we want to do, hit the LZ, head out of here, I mean, we'll be fine, just, just please not do anything to try and fuck this up, okay? Look, you two, we've got to move or none of this is going to make it. Look, I'm sorry for being so cool, but I was training. Sympathize with your loss. But we all know everyone does. We don't have to. You know what, LP? You almost sounded like you meant that. Just hope we don't get ambushed.
Yes, I did. Did you? Motherfucker! You son of a bitch! So, after surviving the ambush, you eluded enemy patrols and several mortar barrages before returning to the extraction site? Yes, sir. And everyone was killed in the ambush except for yourself, correct? Correct, sir. Well, at least you retrieved Colonel Block's logbook. Yes, sir. Sir, I just want to say that everyone did an exceptional job on the mission, and it's unfortunate that they didn't make it because they've been very valuable to us. Don't worry, Lieutenant. You did everything you could. Their deaths won't be held against you. After all, they were only dog soldiers. Yes, sir. Thank you, sir. Think nothing of it. Dismissed. Oh, one thing before I go, Colonel. Colonel Block's logbook? Is it what he said it was? I've kind of been curious about this for the past couple of days. Unfortunately, I can't tell you anything about the logbook. It's all classified now. You did what had to be done. Your services will be remembered by the corporation. Yes, sir. Thank you, sir. Hello, Night City. We're at the top of the hour straight up, and here is info, local and worldwide. People's Party candidate Anderson says she intends to use nukes in the Amazon war if the conflict is still going on when she is sworn into the presidency. Feisty baby, ain't she? Uh, Meta-human rights activist Anton Prometheus is holding a political rally in City Park. An estimated 50 to 100,000 are expected to hear the Politico speak. Metahumans from all across the country are coming to hear the Ogre Politico speak. Listen to him or he'll break your leg. Official body lotto count has just come in, and the official tally for tonight is 86. Lucky winners can get their prizes at local body lotto. So, how long have you been working for the company? This new brought to you by the About two years. They take pretty good care of us girls down here. So, if you don't mind my asking, Mr. White, what did you do to deserve me? I'm a winner. And I reported executive embezzling funds to the company lords. Needless to say, they were quite pleased. And after his permanent dismissal this morning, they gave me a promotion and called in you as a little reward. So who was he? Harold Hellman. Yeah, I've only known him since I moved into the company's business sector after I did my tour in the zone myself. Oh, so you're in the Amazon War? Yeah, as a colonel. Ooh, a colonel. Did two tours in the zone, decorated for bravery three times, won the Distinguished Service Star, had 144 confirmed kills. Yeah, not bad for a company man, huh? Slice and dice. Hope you didn't injure anything too important. Well, nothing nanotech or body bankers can't fix. Besides, I haven't aged a day in years. So you can afford longevity treatments? The cost is two million, but I'm worth it, and the company knows it. Like I said, I'm a winner, and I get what I deserve. I guess it's kind of a little compliment to you as well. Well, Mr. White, I'm gonna be about the best input you've ever had. Oh, I hope so. I wouldn't want to spend the night with you uh, just for the silicon, right? And don't worry, we're pro. I've got dozens of chips. I can be anybody you want me to be. I can be a timid little virgin or I can be a leather goddess. Good, good. And if you're into it, I have a chip where you can beat me up. But that's only if you're into it. Really? What do you say we get out of here then?
this is it. Welcome to my lair, said the spider to the fly. Lights. Check out that six slit chip switch. I'm in charge. Thank you.